a CME impact possible this week. A faint CME may sideswipe our Earth's magnetic field on March 10th, according to Space Weather Latest. The possible CME impact this week. The faint CME might sideswipe Earth's magnetic field March 10th. It left the Sun on March 7th following the eruption of a magnetic filament. No sunspots were involved, but it's a filament. The glancing blow could spark a G1 class geomagnetic storm later this week. Now, the uh, eruption of the magnetic filament, and this is the image of the filament as you can see, dated March 6 here, 2022, eruption filament. It's around the 1 to 2 o'clock position. And the G1 minor geomagnetic storm impacts that could take place. A G1 geomagnetic storm means power systems, weak power grid fluctuations can occur, spacecraft operations, minor impact on satellite operations possible. Other systems, migratory animals are affected at this and higher levels. Aurora is completely commonly visible at high altitudes, northern Michigan and Maine. Now, the last time we had a geomagnetic storm, we had quite a few of the um, Starlink satellites decommissioned. Some of them fell towards the atmosphere of the Earth, burned up. And we even had uh, Russia blackouts. So we have, we seem to have an active uh, solar activity increasing. Every week we have, we're having solar storms and filaments coming at us. Now, a year of sunspots, south versus north. In late 2020, an Indian amateur astronomer, Sumi Adip, Mukherjee decided to photograph the same sunspot for seven days in a row. At the end of the week, he found he couldn't stop. He said, I kept going and photographed the sun for 365 days in a row, he said. And this is the image, a blend of pictures that he has. He says, the image is a blend of all pictures I took. It shows every sunspot that crossed the solar disk from December 25th, 2020 to December 31st, 2021. Only six days are missing due to complete cloud cover. But you can see that it looks as if the patterns are repeating themselves, doesn't it? To me, it looks like the patterns are somehow uh, repeating themselves like a mosaic. He said the composite image reveals two things. First, all of the sunspots are concentrated in two bands, one north and one south of the sun's equator. And second, the south seems busier than the north, busier with smaller sunspots and more. The southern band is wider and there are more sunspots, he says, as we can see. Sunspot data from the Royal Observatory of Belgium confirms the asymmetry from their hemispheric sunspot numbers. And we see that uh, the red represents an excess of southern sunspots, while green denotes the opposite. The beginning of solar cycle 25 is all red in accordance with Mukherjee's photo. Solar physicists have long known that the two hemispheres of the sun don't always operate in synchronicity. The great solar cycle 19 of the 1960s, for instance, was mostly northern and a symmetry which persisted for more than 15 years. More recently, solar cycle 24 had a strong southern peak in the year 2014, and other cycles have been a seesaw mix of north and south with only razor thin margins separating the two. How will solar cycle 25 shape up? So far, it's speaking to us with a southern accent. Stay, stay tuned. So uh, that's what's happening. We know the solar cycles uh, take change every 11 years. The solar wind speed is at 397.2 kilometers per second density two protons per cubic centimeter, X-ray solar flares, six hour maximum, C1 solar flare, March 9, that's today, and 24 hours C1, March 8, that was yesterday. So they're coming in at us at a C1 class solar flare. And this is the movie of the March 6, March 7 solar flare coming at us. Again. we go this one here okay that filament there okay. 
So cosmic rays, solar cycle 25 is beginning, and this is reflected in the number of cosmic rays entering Earth's atmosphere. Neutron counts from the University of Ulu's Sudankila Geophysical Observatory show that cosmic rays reached Earth, reaching Earth are slowly declining, a result of the yin-yang relationship between the solar cycle and cosmic rays. Ulu neutron count today is plus 7%, that's high. 24-hour change plus 0.1% is increasing. Maximum 11.7%, very high, was December 2009. And the minimum was minus 32.1%, very low, was in June of 1991. And we expect to have auroras, northern lights, uh, are around uh, above the, uh, equate, the uh, border of U.S. Canada. We have coronal holes March 9 today. No significant coronal holes on Earth's side of the sun. All sky fireball network. March 8th, yesterday, the network reported 15 fireballs. Every night, a network of NASA all night sky cameras scan the skies above the United States for meteoric fireballs. Automated software maintained by NASA's Meteoroid Environment Office calculates their orbits, velocity, penetrating deep in Earth's atmosphere, and many other characteristics, and daily results are presented here on Space Weather. Now, as far as the near-Earth asteroids, March 9, 2022, today, there were 2,271 potentially hazardous asteroids, and the ones that are coming up would be the biggest, uh, the closest one coming up would be March 15, and that would be distance of three lunar distances, velocity at 10.8 uh, seconds uh, kilometers per second, and the diameter is 43 meters. That's about 100 feet. Please leave your comments. Thank you for your support. This is from Space Weather Latest. support my Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below.